Greetings! Welcome to the first episode of the Strange Ands podcast, video casty type thing, whatever the hell we want to call it. I don't know. Either way, we're going to be uh, playing Pathfinder in this. It's going to be me and a group of people. I am going to be running the game with some players. We've got Brady, Pat, Ian, and Ian. This is going to be a video thing, so you'll see my face and everybody else's face, along with our kind of play area, which is going to be through a website called Roll20, which is just a pretty awesome uh, tabletop role play uh, system for if you can't be at an actual tabletop with your friends and you have to resort to some sort of online thing. It's a pretty nifty tool for unfortunate circumstances. And so I decided to record these sessions for your entertainment. Hopefully they are entertaining. Generally for this type of thing, I would like to do, you know, a, in this episode of the Strange Aeons podcast, look forward to these things happening, or whatever. But with the nature of this campaign, I don't think that's going to be a very good idea. Because I want you to experience somewhat of what the players are experiencing as the mysteries and the weird strangeness of this campaign unravel. So please enjoy episode one of Strange Aeons. All around is a wall of sticky yellow fog tumbling through the alley's canyon of crumbling gray brick walls like some jaundiced flash flood. Ahead, an unfamiliar alley splits, curving to the left and to the right. Behind you, from the silent swell of mist, emanates the sound of footsteps. They are slow, but somehow keeping pace with the careening, hungry wave. Roll for initiative! Yeah, oh, damn, fuck, we're getting right into this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, character sheet. Oh my god, what the hell is my initiative? All right, character sheet me. Uh, Shit fire. I didn't even set up any macros. I guess I'm doing this the old fashioned. Descending order. Sir Thomas is first. What are you doing? This fog is rolling in from behind you with these ominous footsteps echoing from within. There are two paths ahead of you. One to the left, one to the right. Uh, do we still have, like, an idea of who we are? This is all you know. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, I take the path to the left. All right, you run down to the left. Artemis, what are you doing? Uh, can I see him? Can I see anything? Yes, you see him run, like and he takes the path to the left. You notice two others with you okay. in the alley. I will this also loud. go left. All right, you also go left, following the person. Afria. I'm going to stick with the group. I'm going to follow left. All right, so you go left, and Aklo. I roll the one, so I also go left. All right. And you hear the footsteps continuing behind you. you can, it's like you can almost hear the fog itself rolling down this alleyway. And the alley walls sag, battered bricks slumping over the path, nearly blotting out the bruised twilight sky. Again, the grimy cobblestone path splits. This time, one route curves uphill, very dramatically, while the other recklessly descends. Behind the yellow fog and relentless sound of pursuit grows closer. Can we hear each other? Like, running? Yes, you hear each other running. Sir Thomas, what are you doing? I'm going to do perception check. What are you looking, looking for? Looking at... Uh... Looking at the other people, looking at, like, the fog to see if I can identify anything, like a shadow or a shape. All right. Roll me a quick perception. Me. A 14. Sign your character sheet. <laughs> yeah. A 14? All right. Yeah. Uh, the people around you, they look panicked. Uh, you, this is your first time noticing that, like, they seem oddly equipped. Like, a piece of armor here, a piece of armor there. A uh, the backpack that looks sag saggy and empty. A couple of them have weapons, but not all of them. And 
Uh, within the shadows, you see a large looming form. Taking a second to look, it now looks maybe twice as tall as any of you. What do I have in my hands? In your hands, do you want high or low? Uh, low. Your hands are empty. You do not find your sword or shield. Uh, can I detect evil? Is that a possibility? Yes, you detect evil. It is all around you, most powerfully emanating from the fog. Fortunately, that's all your time. Artemis, what are you doing? So he didn't go anywhere. Right? No, he okay. just I'm going kind of stopped to... and took a look around. I'm going to run up the hill. All right, you start running uphill. It is a very hard and arduous task. The further you go, the steeper it gets until it is basically a climb. So climbing the cobblestone? Yep, you're climbing the cobblestone. Okay. Afria. How, can I see this get that steep <sighs> on the right? Uh, at first, it doesn't look like it. It's just kind of like, looks like it's going downhill. And as you look left towards where Artemis went, it looks odd. Because, like, you can see it's going downhill, and he's less than half a black away. And he looks like he's just laying on the hill, climbing it. I'm I'm going downhill. You start running downhill. And quickly, it drops off, and you begin to fall. Is anybody Oops. at the periphery watching Afriel? Uh, I'm not. I'm still staring at the thing. All right. Uh, quick perception roll from anybody who wants to. Okay. As in to see me, or like, am I supposed to? Looking in any direction? Cause... Nine. Well, this is to anybody. Um, like, somebody might see her, him go rushing to the edge and start falling, basically. Oh, I guess I Seven wouldn't eight. see that. I'm going the other way. All right. Aqua, oh you do see it. And you see Afriel starts running down a hill, and it just looks downhill to you, and then he starts, like, falling as though off a cliff. But it looks like he's just basically just getting sucked away. And then he hits a wall. And it's <laughs> messy. <laughs> and you see splattered on the wall next to his now limp corpse the word me. In the blood. Aklo, it is your turn. Okay, so how do I feel about the people I'm with? Do I feel like I know <laughs> these people, or do I feel like I am just happen to be running away with strangers? You have no idea who they are. They seem um, vaguely familiar, but you don't know why. But I don't kind like of feel like, like I'm, in a I'm dream. not like obligated to help them. <laughs> like, I, I, don't no, have, like no. I don't feel like I have any sort of connection with them. No, it's kind, of like, like, okay. it's kind of like... It's kind of like... You feel like you might have had a class with them in college, kind of thing. Kind of vague. Okay, yeah. In that case, then I'm just gonna kind of like smirk a little bit to myself <laughs> as Sir Thomas is uh, stopped, and I'm gonna <laughs> follow after Artemis because that seems to be the smartest thing to do at this time. All right, you start running down that street, and again, it, at first it looks like just a hill, and it starts inclining, inclining, inclining until you're climbing it. That is something I'm terrible at, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And then as the fog overcomes. It reaches Sir Thomas. And uh, Artemis and Aklo, you hear some pretty gruesome screams. You turn back and you see Sir Thomas getting torn apart within the fog. You see blood splatter nice forth. Nice reroll. <laughs> you see blood splatter <laughs> forth on the ground. And in the blood, you see the word save. And then the fog starts... Me save! Me save! And the fog <laughs> starts coming up the hill towards you two. Artemis, it is you. Okay. Well, I'll keep climbing. As you, you keep climb? climbing, the okay. fog keeps rolling up towards you. The climb is getting harder. Aklo. I do my best to follow after Artemis. All right. You keep climbing as well. And that is when the fog overtakes you. And Artemis, you hear a familiar, terrible scream coming from just below you as you see Aklo getting torn apart. And the blood splatters on the walls of the buildings next to you. And you see the word up. Okay. Me save up. Correct. You've seen me save and up so far. You can now make... So now, 
if you would like. Oh God, Artemis. Artemis is gonna die, and it's gonna say, "Wake me." So, <laughs> so would I have seen that? <laughs> you no, because it like, was your blood me? that splattered. Okay, so all I know is me and save. Got it. Yeah, you know me and save. Let's see, where did that? <laughs> I'll just say, can't wake. <laughs> <laughs> so you can roll me there we go a will save that's what it is me no aqua no oh. artemis i Sorry. am aqua. artemis oh. you are is artemis it a will save. okay uh well 22 very nice as the fog approaches you you realize this is a dream and as the fog is about to fall upon you the fog splits you see this very gangly looking humanoid they are wrapped in these fleshy strands of cloth and their arms and legs are disturbingly long they seem to each have an extra joint in the limbs its face begins to open up in a yell as everything goes black and you guys wake up in a cell <laughs> And in this cell, you hear screams from a man. He's saying, wake up, save me, between pained, <laughs> gurgled gasps. It has and to as... be that. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it says. <laughs> you say it one time, wake me up. Wake me up. <laughs> I okay. can't wake up. You can see, <laughs> as your vision clears from the dreariness, you can see him chained to this table. His head is awkwardly leaning towards you, and it's like he's yelling at you to wake up to save him. He is naked and has covered from head to toe in various cuts. You can see parts of his skin have been flayed from his body. And in this cell, you smell blood and burning flesh. And you look around to each other. You recognize each other from this dream you just had. And you're all, well, naked. You see this woman walking around the table that he's strapped to. She is like the creature in your dream. Disturbingly thin. She's wearing a doctor's coat and she has half of what looks like a bolt cutter in her hand and she's just kind of examining him walking around the table she stops makes a cut along his thigh I guess about six inches he lets out a terrible scream as she does and then she continues to kind of pace around the table just kind of examining him I stand you up. Do? You stand up. I start making um, my way over towards the lady. You are like, in a just kind of no fear, like just chest puffed, just like not ashamed of being naked. Just a big brand of a of a sword on my back. You are naked. So you don't have Absolutely. a sword. Absolutely. No, what like, mean, like a brand. Oh, you're like, okay, I get it. So you walk up to the bars of your cell. Are you saying anything? She has not noticed you. I just kind of like whistle a little bit. <laughs> she looks to you, her head moving oddly fast. Her face twists just... into an expression of surprise and anger. And she says, Quiet! And she goes back to examining her patient. I just start whistling like the fantasy equivalent of Old Dixie. Just like Quiet. a like a, a Yomadai like song, right? Just something like like Battle Hymn of the Republic. I just start <laughs> humming and whistling very loud. 
Very nice. Is anybody else I, doing anything? Well, I'm sitting cross-legged in like a meditation style. Um, my eyes closed, but now I'm smiling because I recognize the song. <laughs> and I look up at him. Very nice. And and give him a nod. <clears throat> so right. uh, when Akla wakes up, he is very confused about where he is. But the one thing he thinks of pretty much immediately once he gets his bearings is uh, where's Sophia? So once he realizes that he cannot see his owl familiar, he kind of like cowers into this corner here and I'm just going to try to concentrate on our empathic link to get a feeling of how, like, if Sophia's within range. Okay. What is um, the range of, of your empathic how... link? Um, I think it's a mile without looking it up. <clears throat> Holy shit. But I guess I can look it up real quick. Is Afriel doing anything? Um, Afriel would wake up and he would look down at his hands and um, his hands are just black. Um, they're almost like charred and he's kind of goes wide eyed real quick and then kind of like leans up against the walls and it's kind of like putting his hands behind his back, okay. almost like he's going to hide them. As you do, yeah, you so look around the... your cell, I'm everyone sorry, seems a bit preoccupied with their own things. You see a well-toned man facing away from you, whistling at the bars a man who seems to be in a meditative stance. And then this man next to you, who's also kind of meditating, more just in a focus. I'm just staying quiet and watching at this point. All right. Well, you see what I described? This woman walking around this table every once in a while making an incision on this man, and he screams out. And he's, like, pleading to you guys to save him. Is the what do the bars look like? Like what's the, like what is everything? Like is it like a steel cage? Is there a lock on the outside of it? There's a lock and on how the outside, close is she getting? and they are heavily rusted chains. She is staying conveniently just out of arm's reach. I'm just gonna start uh, reciting the acts of Yomadai. She then turns uh, as best to you. As I can. She then turns to you and says, "Silence." Your turn will be soon. And at that moment, you see the man kind of wriggle a leg out and kicks her in the back. And she slams up to the bars against you and perception I'm gonna grab her by you guys the throat. really quick. Can I do an attempt to grab her? Yes, that will be a CMD. CMB from you, CMD for her. Uh, so that would be... Uh, 18. Or no, just kidding. It would be 21. That sounds better. <laughs> 21. All right. You managed to grab her. Did anybody roll a perception? Um, Did anyone? So, or... um, I would uh, once, if, if I could connect with uh, Sophia, I would. Uh, so yeah, uh, Empathic Link is a mile. I just okay. get like a general be feeling of her emotions. You are connected. She is terrified. Oh, right. So as soon as I like realize I, that, I, yeah, I'll open my eyes and kind of perceive. All right. This kind of happens uh -huh. as her body slams against the bars. And you notice a little jingle jingle as you see a key ring hanging from a little hook on her side. Oh, sweet. Artemis, well, in that you... case, I will. Oh. Oop. Yeah, mm -hmm. Artemis is in the way anyway. Never mind. Um, I... It's... As soon as he uh, grabs her, I'll do a perception as well. Oh, yeah, boy. you see the king's yeah. the keys as well. Okay, <laughs> then I will uh, attempt to snatch them. Okay. From my uh, sitting position, I assume she... Wait, is it on my side? Yes. Okay, then I'll try just, to snatch them. Just from a her. quick CMD. I'm assuming... Oh, he, God. When you grab her... You see her face turns to fear for a moment, and then it's like looking into a mirror. She has your face for just half a second. Ooh. Nice. I like that. <laughs> um, 
I, I'm assuming it's like emanating like evil, right? Like it's just. She is not. She's not okay. She's not. Um. Do you need me to roll something to grab? The roll keys? CMB, please. CMB. Ow! And this whole whole oh. time, I'm just oh, like, oh my god. <laughs> just continuing to recite the acts of uh, Yomadai. Are my... <laughs> nice. Oh. You do not Are my spells grab prepared the for the day? <clears throat> and she tries to swipe at you with this like sharp instrument that she has. She would get a twenty-six to nope, twenty-five to hit you. Without your armor, I'm oh, assuming gee. that hits. Oh, I don't have any armor. Oh no, she's swiping <laughs> at Sir Thomas, the one who's like holding. Oh her. my bad. Sorry. Yeah, that'd be fine. All right, so she deals two damage with this half of a bolt cutter, essentially. Just Our, like, Let's um, go. Are spells prepared, just... or are they all expended? Um. You would have to prepare at this point. Okay. So, Second. as an oracle, I do not need to prepare my spells. So, I would be able to access mine. Don't you okay. still need like an hour of. I do not. Does yeah. a 20 beat your CMD, Brady? Uh, CMD. Uh, do I roll for it? No, it's just that number. Ah, uh, yes, it does. All right. She manages to break free from your grasp after a nice cut to your forearm. Artemis, you may try again to grab those keys from her side. <laughs> Let me try to not fumble completely. Okay, that would be a 12. All right. Well, you don't grab them. <laughs> I'm going to... She... You said the rock... The chain like on the lock was really rusty. The whole thing's like coated in a fine layer of rust. I'm going to attempt to just just try to break the chain. Okay. Like you just pop me... it apart. Like uh, using the bars as kind of like leverage, like the actual point and just pulling back on it All right, as hard as I can. a strength. Oh, fuck that. That's a four. That didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems the pain in your forearm was more than you anticipated and it fucking hurts when you try to pull. <sighs> And as she turns around, giving you a glare, the guy on the table kicks her again, this time from the front, and she slams again into the bars, giving you <laughs> another chance. Her. <laughs> yes, you can. Roll your CMB. Fucking Jesus. Uh, that's uh, seven. Seven? Total? Oof. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> you do not manage to, but Artemis, you can try again. You will get a bonus because it's from behind. <laughs> oh. All oh. right, let's do this. This time. Oh, wait, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, 13. Great. 13 total? <laughs> yeah, my CMB is only plus one. Your CMB has to be higher than plus one. There's no freaking way. No, well, that's what it, He's a monk. I mean, that's right? what it says. Monks here. have a plus zero base attack at level one. What's your so CMB is only strength for him. Yeah. Oh. We're going to do a dex based CMD. Cuz we're trying <laughs> to snatch something. Oh, okay. Well then 14. Oh, okay. With Yeah, monks have a base attack, so <laughs> oh, the CMB okay. is not great. Oh, wow. All right. I thought they did. Either way, from behind that is good enough to snatch the keys as she slams against the bar. And then she kind of pulls away from the bars. She looks at this man understand. very nastily and raises her tool. Leave him alone. Be he wants quiet. Somebody who could fight. And if she says that. I'm not she going stabs to be it into his chest. Oof. I just say a prayer. Over. I too will. And over. Say it. You I just yell, his... thank you, like, as she stabs him. I'm just like, thank you. 
<laughs> she looks confused for a moment at you, and then she starts laughing and starts stabbing him. More. Yeah, I'm not saying it to her. <laughs> okay. As she's still stabbing, I'm gonna go and unlock. Try to unlock the door. Okay. There's only three keys, so you make pretty quick work of the door. You shall pay for your atrocities against this man. Uh Well, I am gonna be next to useless without any gear. <laughs> Gotcha. As the door creaks open, Afriel, you are first. You see oh, the door I... creak open. I'm going to have to stand up. So I believe that takes most of my move. Takes all, um, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stand up and uh, kind of get ready to act next time. It's my turn. Alright. And Artemis, it is your turn. Do we hear the soldier jazz music in the background? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to add some intensity. Alright, I slide out of the door and uh, ready my fists. Say, Yumadai, guide me. And I go to power attack her. Oh, damn. And that will be a... Oh my god. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, roll 20! <laughs> <laughs> a huge fan. You run oh, up love and... It. Whiff! She turns and she's like, Oh shit! And she runs away and you get an attack of opportunity. Okay. So I will just do a regular attack. Yes! Nice. There we Dang. Go. So it's your total. Um, that will be, uh, 19. You hit. Good job. Yay. Let's roll some damage. Uh, let's see. Deuce. Oh, wait, uh, three. Sorry. Three damage. You punch her in the back as she runs away, and it kind of accelerates her forward. And she's like, ow! <laughs> Sir Thomas... Um, so we have our full movement speed now. Let's see, so I'm gonna step out of the cage. God, I gotta actually gotta count shit now. I'm just gonna walk up. I'm gonna start pursuing. And then I don't really know what I can do. Can I attempt to like grapple? Like, is that 30? Or is this um, five foot? It's five foot squares, isn't it? I thought it was three move. foot. I'm used. Sorry. Uh, yeah. My bad. That's all right. Uh, one, so two, it would have been five to there, and then you'd be able to get to here. It would be the furthest. There we go. From where you were. Unless you double move. You could double move yeah, and you get up to her. Move. You just wouldn't be able to do anything to her at that point. Yeah, I'll double move to her. Okay. Get right behind her. Ah, claw. Your toy. I am going to run to this table of implements. Is there anything resembling a dagger? There's pieces of glass, there's various bits of tableware, like spoons and butter knives. You see small That's razors weird. and the other piece of that bolt cutter that she was using. You know, they see other random implements. None of them surgical tools, just kind of random debris that happens to be sharp. Would half of a bolt cutter count as a simple weapon? Yes. All right, I picked that up. Okay. <laughs> It will deal 1d3 damage. That's better than my unarmed damage. Okay. Well, no, it's not, but at least it's lethal. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Afriel. I'm going to mosey on this way. Mm. Moving a strong 20 feet this way. Turning this way. And I did check it up. I do not need to prepare my spells. Nice. So I'm going to bring one of my blackened hands and lay it over this man on the table and cast Cure Light Wounds. All right. So I'm assuming it casts and I don't need to roll, and I roll how much I heal him? Correct. Assuming he's alive. Correct. Well, I'm going to attempt to heal him anyway. 
Ooh, he gets healed for a strong seven. Nice. Nice. You do see those big gaping wounds in his chest begin to seal. And you see his chest start rising once more. Oh, so, God. Artemis. We can always use NPCs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, guys, it's Thomas. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. Thomas Exposition here. <laughs> <laughs> Got a nice car in the other room if you're looking to buy. Hey, oh, God, that guy's really bloody. Him. You might want to heal him. <laughs> might have some valuable oh, information you guys are for all you. Naked. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't know it was that kind of party. <laughs> Whoa! You're naked. I'm naked. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Artemis, what are you doing? Um. Okay. So I'll move up one. Um, I'm guessing this hallway is too short, like, small for me to, uh, like, get in front of her. Correct. Yeah, she's, like, at the door. She ended the turn with her hand on the door handle kind of thing. Okay. All right, well, I will sit here and sort of prepare to attack. And then on her turn, she turns and swings with her belt cutter at Sir Thomas. Oh no, he's on the phone. I have to cut this part out. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm gonna roll the swing. She swings. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He's naked, so he's not hard to hit. Oh yeah, she. Oh, snap. She has a plus eight. Dude, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Bull cutter plus eight. That's crazy. <laughs> Is that with her improvised weapon minus four? <laughs> Is that like a bolt cutter plus five magical would, weapon or something? It basically counts as a bolt shitty bolt dagger. Bolt. One damage to you, Thomas. So, so a total Thomas. of three. Okay. And then she busts through this door and slams it behind her. <clears throat> would that would that be like? You would get an attack, an of, attack opportunity, of opportunity, yes. Only if he's armed or proficient in unarmed combat. This is true. You did not pick a Can I, weapon. I didn't know. Can you attempt to grapple, though? Nope. That's an attack of opportunity. No. Sorry. It's okay. Sir Thomas. I'm going to see and check the door, see if it's open. It is like the or lo- door handle is not locked but it's, it feels jammed like she kind of like hit it so hard closed that it wedged shut so you just okay. need a strength roll to kind of bust it open uh, I'm gonna hold off on that now that I know what I need and then I'm gonna go back to this dude and okay. uh, just kind of do a heel check on him just to see like if there's anything on the table to do like a like basic healing or just check him over. Okay. He's been cured by um, Afriel, so he's stable. Alright. Well, I don't I don't know that. Out of combat. I'm gonna walk over here to these barrels. Oh hey, look, a chest. But well, look here, my friends. Or is that just a table? It is a table. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Boss alarm. I was hoping that was a chest. <clears throat> you see the man is shallowly breathing. This man isn't getting any more heals from me. <laughs> Good work. Some weird gym equipment. You saved a life tonight. Over here, Aklo, you see... It's a step up to the metal floor, and you see what looks like a furnace. The furnace door is slightly ajar. The rest of the floor is simply metal. And then uh, next to you, you see a pile of refuse. And as you kind of like look at it a little closer, you notice there's some gear in there. You see your stuff. Hmm. They tried to burn our stuff? <laughs> It looks like they were about to. Oh. All right. Well, I'll pick all my shit out of there. Is okay. that like all of my stuff? Yes. Are all of our stuff? All right. So I like 
Unless you have Step anything. Up my back. I didn't look at your equipment too closely. Did you have anything like not super mundane items? No, I had like a dagger and a punching dagger and a backpack with some rope. Okay. I guess I had a I had a sensor and a, a pair of wind or not pair but a set of wind chimes too. All right, you do not see the wind chimes. What's the scent or the sensor? Okay. So yeah, I'll put my backpack on with my rope, uh, grab my daggers, and I'll be like, all right. Well, if anyone had any gear, I think I found it. There's still some other stuff that doesn't belong to me. If it doesn't belong to you. I'm glad to take it, but I mean, you'd also see wanna... like your clothes if you want to put those on. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get dressed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, but just saying. No, I'll, I'll at least put pants on. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be gonna be naked for this whole book one. <laughs> yeah. That's like an that's a hidden achievement. <laughs> be book one naked. <laughs> you gained an extra level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna go rummage and see if I, my yeah. stuff is in there. Oh, you get find my all stuff. your stuff. Again, unless you had anything less than mundane like uh or more than mundane like no holy symbols or anything like that mm. you would not see in there no okay i want to see if this man is conscious he is definitely not if you hadn't have healed him that round he would have died pretty man did did you want to grab your gear i I mean, we're all wearing pants now. It's kind of weird that you're the only one that's naked. Fine. <laughs> I'll go grab my my stuff. I'm going to go Fine, put the uh, half of bolt cutter I grabbed back on this table, where I, basically where I found it. You put it down on proper. Mm. It was like, you do see that table, while it's basically just a bunch of random shit, is meticulously organized. Like... There's broken pieces of class, but they're like organized according to shape and size. And then the other like like all the silverware is placed very nicely and like the various other random tools are just placed very neatly in their proper place. Well, I wouldn't want to ruin anyone's organization. So, fellow prisoners, I'm assuming we're prisoners. Um any, any of you have any idea what the hell's going on? Because I uh, can't seem to remember a whole lot. I can't say that I do either, but I, I had a dream and you all were there. Yeah, and There was I... this creepy figure. I do not remember what happened here how we got here yeah I'm not mm, I'm not recalling anything either but I must I say that seems like we're all in the same situation so glad I'm not alone my name is Artemis I do not remember much but I remember my name I'm gonna Wait, sense mode of these name? fuckers <laughs> they all seem as confused as you. Okay. Unless they want to roll a bluff check to do otherwise. No. There's no need. Didn't think so. My name is Sir Thomas of uh uh well, Sir Thomas. I'm uh. a servant of the goddess Yomadai. Aye. Me as well. Uh. Ah, hey, good to be in your company. I'll hold out uh, my hand. I, I was like, a... clasp it strong. Yes. That was a brave Manshake. thing you did back there. I wish I could have been more help and done more. But the damn dice were not with me. <laughs> me too. <sighs> me too. I am Afriel O. Fularis. I think I think I was a holy man before coming here, but I cannot remember my deity. That is a shame. Well, whoever it is, they were with you by saving that man's life. <laughs> I still feel power within me. 
weren't with you very well because they certainly didn't save you from this. I look down and shake my head. Well, we can't do much about our station now. Let's uh, see how we can better ourselves. Let's check on our friend on the table. Oh, he's your friend, is he? Well, he was a somebody in need. Thank you for doing your best to take care of him, Avril. We appreciate it. He he is breathing, but it seems that kick took everything out of him. Maybe the multiple stab wounds had something to say about that, too. <laughs> oh, he's a brave man. I can't deny that. I'll stand above his head and bow my head and start whispering some prayers. His breathing is shallow, raspy. Sounds like there's probably some fluids in his lungs. So I... I'm wondering if anyone else has descriptions of their characters' appearance yet. I do. I do. I would like to envision these people. If you guys would like to to describe each other. Describe each other? Yourselves. Describe yourselves. (laughs) (laughs) Describe yourselves to each other. Yes. There we go. There we go. So, um... Start with that. Starting with me. Um, as I was naked, you would see that like I'm like androgynous. I'm like almost like perfectly crafted. Um, just like all the pictures of like marble statues. That's what my character would look like. So Um, you made yourself. Yes. <laughs> 275 pounds of glory. Uh, my uh, eyes and hair are both gold. Um, and my skin almost just radiates light. Not not for any effective game, but cosmetically. It just glows. Um you would see that I have no body hair at all. Um, and I'm currently wearing like those old burlap monk robes. Um, and I do not have a holy symbol. Um, if you would glance down, you would see that my shadow has feathery wings, even though I do not have any. Um, and you would see that I'm kind of hiding my arms. Um, but it's obvious that my arms are blackened. They are burnt and charred. And they seem to cause me pain. That is Afriel. Alright, Just... well, going clockwise on the map then. Uh, yeah. Aklo. Uh, a pretty average looking, scrawny white dude. Um, I don't know how bald he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's you've supposed got, to be bald. You've got a bit of fuzz. Like, maybe okay. a few days worth. Okay. So, scrawny white dude. Um, not, like, particularly hairy. Just, like, super average, but very... Uh, yeah, just not... Like, doesn't look very, like, toned or anything. Um, that's why I picked Jesse Eisenberg as my bald portrait. <laughs> um... <laughs> And uh, the only dude. thing really noticeable about me is uh, under the stubble on my head, you can see what looks like uh, some sort of scalp tattoo. But you can't really make it out uh, among the hair. And what are you wearing now that you have your clothes back? Oh, yes. Yeah, so now that I have clothes on, I'm just wearing like a light tunic and sort of like capri style like, waiter pants. Not waiter like serving food, but waiter like wading through water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then like a light kind of like medieval version of a chuck. Like a super cheap style tennis shoe. Nice. Alright, we move to <clears throat> Artemis. So Artemis, he's a is a fairly he's like middle aged, around fifties, uh mid to late 50s he uh he's bald on top but you can see that it's not like 
There's no stubble. It's smooth. Uh, except for the... He's got a gray-haired braid coming down the back of his head to about his shoulders. Um, his face looks like weathered, like he's seen a lot. Um, and he's wearing a monk's like outfit, but he has scars all over his body um, from years of training, it looks like, and fighting. Like his his hands are very beat up, like they've been broken multiple times. Um, but he doesn't have a holy symbol either. Um, he just follows Yomadai, his teachings, but doesn't carry a symbol. Um, he just has like the sandals and a backpack with traveling gear and stuff. Um, okay. But a very like solemn demeanor. All right. Continuing around to Sir Thomas. Yeah. So Sir Thomas, um, you said, do we get like our armor and stuff back? Yep. Okay. So um, I haven't donned it yet, but I'm just kind of standing with pants and like a padded shirt on. I'm very tall. I'm very pretty built, but still kind of like hunched over. I'm older. I'm about 45. Um, and I've very similar uh, to the monk. I have very a weathered face. Seen a lot of battle, a lot of war, uh, hardship. Uh, also, apparent a ser- servant of Yomadai. Um, you just see like a dented uh, set of scale mail kind of leaning up against my shoulder, and a, a heavy wooden shield, and then a uh, a bastard sword with a just kind of a radiant sun on the on the handle. Uh, on my on my side um and i have longer hair it's up in a ponytail like in the witcher 3 like with the shaved head on the sides and then slicked back and then i have kind of just like a a full beard almost like a mel gibson looking beard like (laughs) gray like is the one that when he was doing hacksaw ridge so gotcha cool well that is everyone and yeah, you're in this room. It is pretty quiet now. Except for this man's labored breathing on the table. There's still three of his limbs are tied down. Every once in a while you hear the I, echoes of like rats getting I'm, I'm gonna cut his limbs free. I'm assuming it's rope. Yeah, it's cut like, his limbs off. Chains are ropes. If it's rope, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut it free. If it's chains, I'm gonna use one of the key or ask Artemis to use one of the keys. Yeah, he's it's down by ropes. You cut him his okay. limbs free. Were there oh. any clothes left in that pile? Yeah. It looks like a dozen or so is people's worth of like clothing and random little things. You well, do we can notice, use some of that to bandage him up, at least. If anybody wants to roll perception while looking through the clothes. Hell yeah. Oh. Perception checks. Oh, man. Uh, that is a 20. Nice. Why couldn't I, I get that, that fucking another time? Right. Ooh, yeah, I'm not finding shit compared to that 20. Me well, neither. the DC for this was 10, so... As you're looking through, you're noticing a lot of, like, doctor's coats and, like, more more so, like, patient smocks kind of thing. Is like there anything the that, like, is similar to our gear? Like, we had full fucking kit. Right. You know, like, there's... Is, is there, like, other bits of armor, or is it just kind of, like, scrubs and... You see some shit. leather armor, but that's it. Otherwise, it's just, like, scrubs and smocks and stuff. The medieval version. I just... uh, I pick up the leather armor, and I just... kind of hold it in my hand, and I was like, is this yours? It's not mine. Okay. Maybe we could give it to our friend over there. If he's well enough to don some armor. Perhaps. That creature or woman, she... She blocked the door, but I think we could break it down and and uh, get through here. I don't see it would be that big of a problem. Well, we should probably uh, do that. There's not much more we can do for this man. And I, for one, 
would rather not be stuck here much longer. I think we need to get him on his feet. He could be valuable. Right. He saved our lives. I don't disagree. Gave us a chance. I'm not saying we necessarily abandoned him, but there's not much more we can do for him at the moment. Certainly I can't do anything. Until I find the source of my power, I can't help anybody. I... I could give him another healing from the gods. If the gods shine down upon you, I would uh, encourage you to do so. And I put my hand on him again and cast Cure Light Wounds. Okay. I know another I made light strong of that. seven. Nice. I know I made light oh, of that nice. before, but it is it is nice to know that there is some power still with us. And he's some. eyes open up as many of his cuts begin to seal across his body. He is no longer bleeding from every single inch of his skin. Uh-huh. It kind of looks around and sits up. And, uh, thank you for that. Oh. You have saved us and we are thank here to save well. you. Well, thank you. I'm glad what I did worked. It's all I could manage. But it works. How are we? <laughs> well, the name is uh, Camp Ray Linway. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Could, could you put on this name tag? Sure. <laughs> see if I can get, find myself standing up as well. There's an extra set of armor. Do you need some? Uh, sure. I'm not really talented in the ways of combat, but I'll wear it. Might as well have some protection against these things. Do you remember anything of this place? Uh, it's an asylum for the mentally insane. I don't feel uh, insane. Well, it went a bit crazy. I'm not sure what happened. Everything started going haywire and Weird things started appearing. I was how long, how long caught very been? quickly by someone, and I was taken down here. I've been down here a while, just watching and oh. waiting and hearing the screams of my fellow orderlies as that woman had her way with them. You seem to remember more than any of us. Were we already here? Yes, you were already in that cage. Why'd they choose you first, then? Well, I, I don't know. She had brought me down before you. I know that. Hmm. You had been down here for maybe a few hours before she started on me. Oh, so you were here before us? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I misheard you. No, I, I misheard. <laughs> I apologize. I'm a little delirious we <laughs> after my uh, session with that woman. That's understandable. Well, we're uh, mounting uh, an escape, as, as as you may have noticed. Um, an escape would be good. I think they it's brought about me down. We got out of here. They sent me down through a chute in the next room. Behind that door. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, go to the door and use perception to see if I can hear anything going on through it. Okay. Twenty C. Damn. All right, uh, here's right, some like you can stay. Scuttling <laughs> and scratching, and uh, every once in a while you hear a little. I am going to try to kick this door around. I'm probably going to hurt myself doing it, but as soon as I hear that noise. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a one. <laughs> so you kind of like lift your foot and go. <laughs> and you just like sprain your ankle. And it's like, ah! Oh! Like, fuck. I'm going to like limp and hobble and like scurry back over here and be like, Sir Thomas, you, you seem to be the strongest out of all of us. I, I need you to break down that door. Before we go break down that door. Please, please, immediately. Doors, uh, is there yourself. is there enough clothes in there of what they wear here to 
perhaps put on a disguise. Yeah, there would be enough in there. There's like a whole pile of them, like a few dozen people's worth. Yeah, they're taking too long. I'm going to try again. Okay. All right. 18. This time you run at the door and slam into it. And the door bursts open. Woo-hoo. Sophia! You're happy hooting. I, like, tackle us. Uh, kind of look at everybody tackle. and just shrug. I tackle Jeez. her and, like, roll past the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. She's completely ignoring the bodies. I'm just you, kind of, you see, she's got like, like a little chain and... around her uh, like neck, like a collar. And it's just kind of like attached to the wall. Ooh, Sir Thomas, <laughs> do you think we can really just walk our way out of here? Well, I think that uh, no, <clears throat> to answer your question. Uh, I don't. But I think that they just made it very difficult kicking down the damn door. Sophia, don't worry. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so there's no one out there. Artemis, but can I, can I get see, those keys from you? You see a big pile of dead bodies at the bottom of a chute. I'll hand the, the, chute heads I'll hand the keys over. Up at kind right. of a 45. I can imagine like the stench just wafting in the room. Oh, yeah. Just, like, it's nasty. I try the keys uh, that I got from that lady on Sophia's collar. All right, you are unable. You are able to undo the collar. Ooh, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna be so mad. It's a trap. <laughs> you undo the collar. Roll the reflex save. Thank God. Fireball. <laughs> she so just explodes. All right, let me see. I Delayed think blast I maximize fireball. Good up. luck. Well, uh, I'm going to put on the the clothing of these people, the one that matched that woman. Perhaps we can hmm, try to sneak th- our way through here. All right. You now look like a doctor. A very shiny, pretty doctor. <laughs> the prettiest right. of doctors. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I come back into the room with an owl on my shoulder. What are and the I look, chances of there? I look so much more at peace now. <laughs> what are the chances here. of there being another Azamar doctor here? You'll blend right in. Whoa. Is there a robot? Robot voice. Robo Ian's back. <laughs> my favorite Ian. Uh, I also just kind of put on some, like, a doctor's robe. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Like the yes. biggest one I can find. Hopefully, so I don't have to take off my armor. Right. I guess I'm going to attempt a disguise. So I'm going to add three to this roll. Nine. Okay. Uh, I will also try a disguise. You have a doctor's coat on. 21. You actually look like a doctor. <laughs> Standing next to me, you, you look like you <laughs> might actually belong here. Aha! <laughs> My name is Dr. Thomas. <laughs> I just kind of get a funny accent. <laughs> Smile and wink. Shiny see, white teeth. You see Campery put in some orderly clothes and, well, looks like mm-hmm. he actually belongs here. Because, well, he does. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Campery? Campery. Or Campery? He didn't put know. on that name tag yet. Is it not? Campery. Can you not see it? No. Here, here's a sticker. You can there we go. write your name and there it is. <laughs> yeah, now that he's got actually his smocks, it says Campray on the lapel. <sighs> Not lapel. I just kind of like Whatever. look at you guys quizzically. Like, um, are you sure that's gonna work? No. Well, if it doesn't, I have my armor under it. Mm. Maybe if they look at us from. 150 feet away. I, I think I look pretty good. <laughs> ah. Yeah? You, you'd fool I think me. I'll, I think I'll stick with my clothes. Well, apparently we're going to be transporting you if anyone asks. Wait a minute, like, Campry actually has, like, a named garb? 
Yeah. No, we were just joking. Oh, yeah. Okay. He has a name, Garb? No, no, it's just, like, orderly smacks. Our sticker, so he we just can looks like Oh, Jesus, I was like, I was like, holy fuck, were you an employee? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he point? says that, like, yes. What was I your was salary? An, I was an employee of this establishment. Not establishment, of this, what? uh, sanitarium. Then well, what the uh, hell happened? Like I said, uh, there was one night where there was lots of screams. There was people screaming of monsters and terrible nightmares. And then, uh, well, that's when I got caught. I've been down here ever since. Did you happen to know the lady that was going to work on you? That I did, unfortunately. Her name was, uh, Elise Skein. Elise. Did Elise Skein always have a mirrored face? So when I look her in the eye, I see myself? No, she's... She's been turned into something else. Ooh, she's about to get turned into something dead. <laughs> and he looks Good kind one. of sad and at that time. And it's like <laughs> Wasn't she, saying it to be clever. She was my friend at one point. Sorry to hear that. Uh, no longer. Well, remember she's... when you uh, swing something at her? She's not your friend anymore. Aye, she's become unless we else. can unless we can cure her. That would be lovely. <laughs> Good. So do all these bodies look like they just fell out of the chute and they're just piled here now? Yep. Are they all wearing like orderly and doctor uniforms? Um, most of them, yes. <laughs> The ones that haven't have been, like, stripped. Okay, you do so they're see... either naked doctors or orderlies. There's not, like, any gear piled in there. Roll a perception for me, please. Not looking forward to digging in there, but if I see something super shiny, I'm going to take it. <laughs> 19. Well, you don't see something shiny, but you do notice a couple people in there that aren't quite right. They've got grayish skin. They look... I'm just going to read the description. They look almost unfinished, with a narrow head, gaunt limbs, and a sinister, noseless face. Would knowledge, arcana, or the planes reveal anything about them? Um... Arcana, I think, would. 21. They are doppelgangers. Hmm. Curious. There's just hmm. like two or three of them in the pile. That's very strange. Some of these people are actually doppelgangers. <laughs> Of, of course, there are doppelgangers here. That's very strange. I would explain maybe why her face was appeared mirrored to you, Sir Thomas. It could. I don't know why only her face would change. Maybe they're stealing their power or something equally disturbing. Camper. Campery. Yes. <laughs> Do you know the way out of here from this room? I came down that chute. Those stairs. Well, you never been lead down here before. Stairs as well, but yeah, those, those are the, are the only real stairs behind me. And two exits, unless we want to climb up the furnace that leads to the boiler room. Mm. Mm. No, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> that actually right. sounds very difficult, but not a bad idea. Well, from what I've seen, the furnace hasn't been active lately, so it's not like it's actually hot in there. It's just now just an ash-covered tube that leads upstairs. Well, I I don't think I possess the strength to climb it. Uh, no, neither do I. And I then mean, this chute can work. this chute leads upstairs as well. So. Didn't we say there were stairs over there? Yes, and there's I, stairs right there. here behind behind me and Sir Thomas. I think we should take the stairs and I'll lead. Alright. 
Okay. Start going up the stairs. I, <clears throat> I can follow, so it looks like I'm um, your patient. Lead on, doctor. Da 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 da. Gonna cure some people, people today. And as I'm gonna you load get... up my crossbow as we walk up the stairs. Okay. Don't have a sword that in my teeth. As you get around a couple corners, as I you don't get around care. a couple corners, you are met with a wall of rubble. Well, I guess we're going up the chute. <laughs> Campray, did you say there is another way beside the chute? Ah, uh, no. There's the chute or the furnace. Oh, I almost forgot. There's probably some things of your in his in here. Come over here. He points at a couple bags of stuff by the corner here. Start rummaging through some stuff. And as you look through the bags, you guys would find any of the things that wouldn't have been by the furnace. Oh, thank God, my wind chimes. Oh. You want to die, bless us? Oh, thank God, my 50 feet of twine. <laughs> That was probably <laughs> the he was probably in the other room. <laughs> but you find well, various. If you think we other, can make it up the furnace, you find various other things in that pile. If you are interested, I can pull up. What you're well, I I do possess rope. If if that furnace isn't if the chimney is not too long, I someone else could throw rope down, which would definitely aid me in climbing. Well. I, uh... You also find a violin. The bow is missing, but the violin is there. In pretty good condition. Interesting. Remarkably undamaged. Hmm. Does anyone play? Can't say that I remember how to. Does no, anybody pick it, it up? I mean, yeah, I think I think somebody would while we're like yeah. rummaging through this stuff. Well, whoever picks it I'll up, pick it, roll I'll pick me it up. perception. I'll I'll roll this bitch. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, that is a seven. All right. Well, as you pick it up, you hear some rattling inside it. I look inside. Like you see what looks one like of the slots. a rolled up piece of paper is kind of like rolling around on the inside. Uh, can I like reach into like one of the vents and pull it out? Sure. Roll me... Ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah, you managed to do it. I don't need to have a bunch of rolls for that. <laughs> I would say, I, I'm like, I will just smash it if... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like... <laughs> you get the piece of paper out and it just... Bears the name Osseal. Osseal. U S E I L. Like that. Osseal. But that is all it says. Campry, do you name no no somebody named Osseal? Uh that I don't. Osseal. There were a lot of people that worked and were patients here. Didn't know everyone. Sorry. Well, it does seem a shame to leave such a nice thing in this dump. Would you like it? I'll carry it if no one else wants to. Hi. Be my guest. I don't. Well, I think probably the best bet would be the shoot, frankly. After you? Eh, all right. Or would you like me to go? I'm I'm a big man. I don't know if you want me to fall back on you. Well, I'm not much of a fighter. I'll go. Come on, roll Here. All right, roll me a climb check. Okay. Uh, oh, 20. You scuttle uh. right up the chute. Oh, it can't be that hard. I'll go up after. Oh, nope. I slide down. <laughs> well, the good thing 
that is actually enough to make it up. Oh, damn. I, I even have a chance at this one. You have a much slower time at it, but you do make it up. Let's see, climb his strength. Oh, I'm adding zero. <laughs> so after That's more than I get to add. Actually slides back down. <laughs> <laughs> DC five. Shit. Wait, can we just take ten at it? I'm just going to take ten then. Um, because there's not really any penalty for failing. I suppose there you could just take a take ten. All right, you can just take ten and climb your way up. All righty, you find yourselves in a dark room. At the top, there's a little kind of door that you can just open above your head. And there's a dark room that you climb into. Is there any type slight... of light coming into this room? There's a slight amount of light coming from a door right there, just from the underneath it. Okay. Can I stealth? I'm going to check the door handle. All right. See if it's locked. It is not. I can okay. Oh, there. I can see stuff now. How is it in the wrong part of the map? Um, I'll look I to do... everyone and give a nod. I kind of just hold up a finger like, like, wait, let's do a perception check. Like, just point to my ear, like, let's listen, see if we hear anything. Okay. I roll a perception check and hear shit. <laughs> I'm going to roll. roll. I need I to add. Two will roll. I need to add three to my roll. So, 24. 11. <laughs> Alright. You guys hear rain. A lot of rain. What about and the third key? It's what unlocked. It? Oh, I thought you said it was locked. Yeah, it's unlocked. Bye bye, Ed. Um, I'm going to attempt to stealthily open the door. Close okay. the door! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me a stealth. Oh, ten. The door opens with a bit of a creak. We don't really hear it against the sound of the rain. You see what looks like a courtyard. It is raining pretty intensely. Above, you see some roiling storm clouds. So is it fairly dark, or can I see that it's midday? Or Trampled flower beds lie smeared and squashed across this muddy courtyard. On all sides, stark gray walls climb toward a narrow gap of sunless sky. Rain falls down. Every once in a while, you see a bit of lightning streak across the gray ness above you. Okay, I'm going to sneak out of the door like right around here. You step into the muddy courtyard with the stamped flowers and other plants. It seems like it's been raining for quite a while. This ground is very soaked. Very muddy. I'd like to peek around the corner with a like a perception. See if I see anything. Ooh, seven. As you peek around the corner, see. you see what looks like used to be a shed, but some of the walls have crumbled on top of it, leaving a wall of rubble. So do I see any other... Is this a door right here? Or do I you see do any see a other door right there, yep. Oh, okay. There's a door right here. Okay. I'll uh, go back in and like, motion for everyone to come on out. And nod and just start walking out. You quickly become heavily soaked in the rain that is falling. Yeah, okay. So I'm like, looks like this is the only door here. The uh, walls crumbled back there. That is the only door, then that is where we are going. Are there any windows on the inside of these walls? You do not see any windows. They're just stark gray okay. walls. Okay, cool. Um, I'll lead the way. Well, this this is this the only... door. Oh, whoops. I, I thought was gonna that say, was... Oh, I thought there was light coming from like the crack down there, like there was up here. Yeah, I think that's just a, uh, there's a glitch a bit of in the a matrix. Crack. There we go. No more crack. I just try to open the door ever so slightly. This door is locked. 
I motion for the keys. Okay. You do find a key that opens the door. Before you do that... Oh, damn. It's gonna <laughs> motion to the ears again, like you did. Motion to the ears. It's motion okay. To the ears. The ears. I step in. Like, I'm, I'm like, kind of, like, just in the doorway, like, so nobody else can get by, and I'm just gonna look around. All right. Do a perception yeah. check. Broken lanterns and several battered doors lie in this cold, rubble-strewn hall. To south, a pair of swinging doors <laughs> lie shit. shattered upon a four-foot-high... <laughs> Stop the description. He rolled three. <laughs> <laughs> a pair of swinging no, doors <laughs> lies shattered upon a four-foot-high heap of wreckage, or wrecked furniture clogging a broad door frame. And just beyond, you see two guards kind of... Uh, standing post and are you attempting a stealth uh i mean i can attempt a stealth i don't know how well it'll work but we can we can try so does it go this way and this way whoops like north and south are the two directions or is it just south towards the guards it's south towards the guards and then north into the darkness i'm actually going to step back but i'm also just going to try to be very stealthily stepping back all right roll me a stealth oh fuck Oh shit! <laughs> is, is that a solid four? It's a, it's fucking no. It's a one. Like, oh, you are oh. negative. <laughs> so, um, All right. so, dude, I got uh, fucking armor on. As um, you, uh... well, I wouldn't know that I failed it. So, like, right. I'm gonna pretend like I did a great job being stealthy. And as then, you kind of like step just... back, you hear, "Whoa, there! We got some more here." I mean, he did look like a doctor. Like, do I hear that? Yeah, you good. hear that. And oh, guards, no, that. gentlemen, it's just me. Dr. Bernard. <laughs> um, don't come any closer. I just, like, shut the door. You see oh, four... I'm sorry, gentlemen. You must be on edge today. You see four... I got lost uh... wandering around the, the campus. <laughs> you see four <laughs> crossbows trained on you, and they're like, don't, uh, don't come any closer there, bud. Bud, I'm a doctor. I worked hard for this degree. <laughs> a doctor, bud, to you. Yeah, sure. sure Dr. Bernard. Dr. Don't, Bernard here. Don't get any closer. Stay right there. You see Why do man, you point your crossbows at me? You see a man a little bit more decorated, kind of comes around the corner, also with his crossbow up. It's like, hi there. Don't, uh, don't you come any closer, all right? Just back way, nice and calm. Perhaps there's something I can help out with. I'm gonna do a diplomacy check to try to convince him that I can help them. Fucking watch it. It's gonna be a goddamn one. Fucking nine. God damn it, son of a. Yeah, sure. You can help by uh, not coming any closer. Just uh, stay back in there, all right? Stay over in your part. We'll stay in ours, and everything will be great. All right, sounds good. Is it okay if I go to the north? All right, I'll go to the north. How's that sound? Yeah, go back north where you came from. Stay up there. Why can't I come south? You know why. So, you just kind of like look surprised like, pfft. You know why you can't come down here? You don't know why any of your kind can't come down here. Why can't Racist. the doctors come down here? No, the doctors, see? The doctors, see? <laughs> 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 we would welcome a real doctor, but not what you are. Oh, bollocks. Why do you gentlemen have to make this so difficult? We're not the ones making difficulty, evil shapeshifters. Do I look like a bloody shapeshifter to you? Well, that's the thing about them. Kinda, they look like whatever they kinda, want. Kind of by definition. <laughs> Can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a test that you would like to administer to make sure that I'm not a shapeshifter? A spot of silver to touch, maybe? And to prove yourself, huh? If you're not really one of them, bring me back three dead. Then maybe we can talk. How do I know you're not a shapeshifter? Ha! Huh. They all just kind of laugh a bit. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. The doppelganger's trying to play us. Uh, excuse me, what'd you say? They're a doppelganger trying to play us. Oh, uh, that's obviously what a doppelganger would say. Ha! <laughs> huh. Sure. Now go on. If you're truly well, not so would one you of like them... Bring us three dead. Those are the terms. I just kind of like shake my head. Three dead, who would you like killed? Doppelgangers. 
Three doppelgangers killed. Three killed. of your own kind. Maybe we can talk. I say it one more time there. I am not a bloody doppelganger, but if you need to, Improve and they deserve it. to die, then I'll consider it. Can I just ask though, what, uh, how did doppelgangers start running the muck in this place? People started changing. As the nightmares came, as you would know, people started changing into those creatures. Well, I always like to know who I'm working with, or working for. My name is Sir Thomas of, uh, I can't remember, but uh, Sir Thomas, I'm a knight of Yomadai, Godos of Light, and you sure. are... I'm the captain of this area. That's all you need to know. All right, captain. Well, we can look at bringing you some dead for the uh, double gangers there. I'll make sure to bring... You said three bodies back, right? Aye. All right, captain. I point to the guy in like the back. I was like, your crossbow is even drawn... The bolt's not even in there, and I just kind of like smile and like walk out, like make him look at it. <laughs> <laughs> he does check. I believe there were some deceased doppelgangers down the chutes. Is that right, Akilo? I look at everybody and just kind of silence everybody and say, like, I would suggest we take this conversation that way. Like, I just point, like, towards the way that we came. I back up to let people back into the room. And I shut this door, too. As I said, Aklo. Aklo. Yes. Aklo. Right. I was talking to my owl. I forgot you, my character's name, also. You said uh, <laughs> there were some doppelgangers in the, down the chute, right? Yeah. Um, do I remember how many were in the pile? I know you said a couple, for sure. There's a couple dead in the pile, yep. Would we be able to get three out of the pile, or just literally a couple? You would get two. Okay. Yeah, there's, uh... Oh, there's two. better than none. There's two in that pile. Um, yeah, I don't know how we're gonna get them back up, I guess. How long is the chute? It's about 50 feet. Oh, well, I guess with, uh... With a rope, we could tie them up and drag them up uh, that way. I have... I have 50 feet of rope. Me too. That would be plenty. Well, uh... Let's, uh, bring some of the bodies up the chute. We'll, we'll see if we can reason well, with them with two. Um... I... I'll uh, offer the rope. I, I certainly don't have the, the strength to... You don't have to bring their full bodies, just bring their heads. Well, did they ask for their heads or their bodies? They just, three, they just said three dead. You're the doctor here. <laughs> yes, I am, Dr. Bernard. <laughs> All right. You guys sever a couple of uh, doppelganger heads and bring them back up the chute. All right, I will, uh, I'll do the negotiating because I talked to them. I'm still under the assumption that they don't know that. Other people. Are okay. Well, I uh, let me let me help you first. I'll uh, touch you lightly on the shoulder, and you feel particularly lucky. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, Touching luck. advantage, and uh, as as he like walks through the door again, I'll just start like laughing under my breath. <laughs> per perhaps I can come and assist with your diplomacy. Sure thing. So as long as I keep laughing, you get to roll two d20s for all... I think it's skill checks. Let me double check that. Yes, ability, attack roll, saving throw, or skill check. One, once per round. And as you come into the hallway, they'll raise their crossbows again. It's just me and uh, my friend here. We uh, that was managed to get two. Toss them through. Just toss their heads. These look uh, pretty dead. They are very dead. I'm very good with my sword. They also look pretty old. They were old. They were elderly doppelgangers. What more do you want? <laughs> nah, it's been, they've been dead a while. You didn't kill these. You just said you wanted two dead. I want you to kill them. You don't know that I didn't kill them. I want you to kill those You don't know bastards. what power my sword has. What power your sword has. It sucks the life right out of them. Make some rot for a few days right there. You never know. There are lots of magics in this world. I'll need a bluff on that. Uh, let's see. Come on, baby. Fucking shit! <laughs> shit! <laughs> that makes sense, though. Well, you do it. Um, did you roll twice for the bit of luck? No, I rolled once. Fucking 20! Oh, oh, man. Oh. Nice. <laughs> They'll start to look a bit gotcha. more uh, nervous. 
Alright, you just, maybe you got a uh, something there. We'll need to be safe. Like I said. Bring me fresh. Bring me a fresh head. We'll let you through. You're being awfully demanding here, Captain. I mean, I, I like don't... I said, I, I'm just here to help. Any which way I can. If do I, to... Can I do a perception check on their armor? Sure. Um, do I get to roll again? I don't know, Ian. Awesome. With still touch laughing. Alexa going? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still cackling, so yep. Okay, so that was... Uh, ten. Alright, their armor looks like battle-worn. Like, they've been here a while. They've not had a real chance to repair or uh, get new armaments. They look dirty and sweaty and bloody. No, I don't I'm believe that you're from outside. That means you're from in here somehow. And that makes me quite a bit nervous, you must understand, with these things running about. Now, can I ask you a question? Sure. What, uh, what do you do? I mean, can't you sense the goodness within me? We I'm honestly guards. a good person. We are soldiers. We protect these. I've said too much. Bring me another dead, fresh, this time, and we'll talk more. Do you think in a celestial being as myself would lie to you? A celestial being, no. A doppelganger, absolutely. Well, I might want to point out that a doppelganger shadow couldn't mimic the wings of a celestial being. You could be using you got any a kind lantern? of weird magics. If you got a sword that can make them rot that quick, who knows what else kind of magic items you got. You are a very, very, very suspicious individual. That's why I'm still alive. Uh, one fresh one. I'll try not to strike him with my sword. If these people are to help us, we might as well play by their rules. All right. Since I brought you too, can I get a name from you? You call me Vostin. Vostin? Aye. Captain Vostin, again, Sir Thomas. And uh, we'll bring you a fresh head for you. I hope you do. So fresh will be whistling Dixie. That's kind of a bolsterous laugh and just kind of push. Astro feel out the door. <laughs> oh, I'll move when I'm done typing. <laughs> Story into this box. Hey, what's the time frame? Because I would like to give Chloe a reprieve from the child. Actually, this could be a good place to end. Oh, okay. Well, that's convenient. You guys have just kind of <laughs> figured out what you guys are gonna do. Got and you go to level race. 20! Damn! No. 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 <laughs> Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed episode 1 of the Strange Aeons uh, video podcast type thing. Once I figure out the whole podcast through iTunes thing, I will be uploading the just audio of that to that. So, yeah. And once it is ready, I will have a link in every video description for this to go to that. Um, and so that way you can, you know, listen to it in a car or at work or wherever. I mean, I suppose if you just set the YouTube in the background, you could do that too. So, Either way, I just want to have more options available for people, and once I figure that out, that's how it will be. Also, soon is going to be uh, another podcast that I'm doing of a game that I'm actually writing called Ulm. It is a tabletop role-playing game, uh, kind of a fantasy type thing, but it will also have the option for more um, either high fantasy or low fantasy It'll have options for kind of more realism and sci-fi kind of stuff. It's admittedly a, an overly ambitious project on my part, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's coming a long way, and I am excited to kind of put out this podcast. It's going to be a playtest of the system as we develop it, and yeah, it should be an inter should be an entertaining story as well. So look forward to that in the future. Bye.